Today, we're doing devotional two of our microbiology unit. And last time I asked you a very good question at the end. I know you were all thinking about that. You said, okay, Mrs. Schlegel, I get it. Aliens, it doesn't make sense because where did they come from? But what about God? Where did God come from? I heard you think about that, didn't I? But I wanna just pose for you something that philosophers call a categorical error. And that is that when we talk and philosophize, when we think about things and we ask questions, sometimes we do them with what we call a categorical error. Let me give you an example of a category, categorical error. Let's say that uh, you were going to paint a picture. And so you got out your colors and you started to paint the picture and you have reds and greens and yellows. And all of a sudden you get to the point where you're just not sure what color to use on something. So you say to your mom, hey mom, what color do you think I should paint this dog? And your mom looks back and says, oh, I think you should make it the sound C. And you go, what? The sound C? Yeah, you know, the sound C. And you're going, uh, well, I don't know how to paint the sound C. That's not a color. I'm looking at what color to paint my dog and you give me a sound. So here's the thing, that's a categorical error. When I'm asking for a color and you give me a sound, that just doesn't, it doesn't work. All right, so what I want you to think about is this, God is not a created being. So we can't put him in a category of being a created being and ask the question, well, who created God? God's outside of his creation. See, he has to be because creation can't create itself. Something has to be outside of that creation in order to be able to create the creation. Remember in Genesis chapter one, the very first verse in the Bible, it says in the beginning was God. Okay, in the beginning was God. He was there in the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of time, the beginning of creation. What began? Creation did. It doesn't say God had a beginning. It says God created and began everything. So everything that has a beginning, God created that. But God, he does not have a beginning. I know it's hard to grasp this concept, isn't it? So I'm going to try to see if I can help you understand it with a little story. It's just a fun one. I know it's kind of far-fetched, but let's just play for a while, okay? I want you to imagine for a second that you're like, I don't know, hanging out like a fly on the wall in Leonardo da Vinci's workshop. Now you might be going, who's Leonardo da Vinci? But I hope since you're educated, you know that Leonardo da Vinci was a famous artist. And in his workshop, there are paintings all over that he has painted. And let's just pretend that you're able to hear the paintings as they talk amongst themselves. I know paintings can't, but we're just playing. In this conversation that you overhear, you hear each of the paintings talking about Leonardo. And they're saying how amazingly well he was painted. He was painted so well that he is not subject to being stuck on a wall like all of us other paintings are. He can come and go as he pleases and I wonder where he goes when he leaves this painted workshop. And who exactly painted him anyway? Okay, so that's a categorical error, isn't it? See, the paintings are making the assumption that Leonardo was painted, but Leonardo da Vinci, he wasn't painted. He was a created living being. But it is impossible for the paintings to understand that created living being because they are not created living beings. They are only painted beings. You make things out of Legos, but you're not a Lego, right? You form something out of clay, but you weren't formed out of clay. Oh, I heard you think that thought. I heard you think, but wasn't Adam created out of the dirt of the ground? Yes, he was, but you weren't. You see, as we study microbiology, you're going to see how you were created, but you can look in Psalms 139 and find out exactly how you were created. It says there that you are made fearfully and wonderfully by God. So no, you weren't made out of clay. You're made by a God who planned, intricately planned to make you just as you are. We as human beings who are created have a hard time grasping the concept of a God that was not created and that did do the creating and set, stands outside of his creation. So let me try to help you understand it a little bit as I draw something on the board that can kind of give you a feeling for where we are in our existence and where God is in his existence and see if this might help a little bit. 
All right, so here I've got a little box I've drawn, and this is going to represent creation, everything that's created, everything that has a beginning, okay? So this is creation. And we have everything in there that has been created. That means our planet, all the animals on our planet. So our elephant is there and there's our elephant. Can't really see him. And our giraffe is there. And our, our hippo, he's there in that box. And our zebra, he's there in our box of creation. And you and I are in the box of creation, okay? Everything, even the stars in the sky and the galaxy and even things that we know nothing about yet, okay? Even a little single cell is in this box of creation. But there's one thing that's not in that box of creation. Even the angels are in the box of creation. Okay? Everything. Everything that's been created is in that box of creation. But there's one thing that's not in that box of creation because it wasn't created and that's God. So God is outside of the box. This is where God is. God's not in the box. So we can't ask questions that we ask for things that are in the box, such as, well, when did God have a beginning? Ah, the beginning, the Bible told us about that. God began, that's part of the box. But see, God's outside of that box, so he doesn't have a beginning. You see, this is the only thing that can make sense. An alien would be a created being. And he could not, if he exists, be able to create his own life. I mean, can you do that? You couldn't. Nothing could create itself. And that's the problem with evolution. Because evolution has to have a start. And we have to ask ourselves, where did that start become? It couldn't just have popped into existence. We know enough about science that things don't just pop into existence. Okay, so in our drawing we have God. He's outside of creation. And then we need to ask ourselves, okay, what happened with the Bible and with God and his creation? Um, what I want you to think about is this. There's the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God speaks into the box. Okay, he speaks into the box through the prophets. And he speaks, he starts out in the very beginning, in the box, walking and talking with Adam and Eve. All right? So he starts out there. He starts out where God can come and go in this box that he created of creation. And he can talk with his with those that he created but then sin enters and when sin enters something happens and that that which happens changes everything all right at that point when we see the rest of the old testament we see prophets and things like that and we understand that god speaks now into the box so that in the old testament we have god speaking into the box And he does this through the prophets, okay? And then we see the New Testament happen and we see the gospel, we see Jesus coming as a baby and he starts to interact in a totally different way than he did ever before. Yeah, when he was, when he first created Adam and Eve, he came and he walked and talked with them. But now Jesus comes as a baby in the form, in the body of a human being. And he walks and he talks as a human to his creation. So now God comes, steps into the box. So now, New Testament, gospel, is God in the box. All right? So God comes and he, he, he enters into his creation in a very amazing way, a very personal way. A, such a personal way that he comes as a created human being, something that is absolutely amazing, the God-man. And then we have the New Testament revelation where we will see outside of the box, so to speak, uh, by God's power alone. The concept here is, is that now we can not only know God, 
but because Jesus died, rose again, and sent us his Holy Spirit, we now have a connection with the God of the universe that is extremely special. We now can see outside of the box and understand God at a level and in a way that never before was able to be done. So we have a new Testament revelation, which is man sees outside of the box. And again, this is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible talks, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, but the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being a, a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. We'll talk about that as we get more into what that hope is that we have. All right. The other thing I want you to think about is, is that God made us as eternal beings. So there will be a time in this New Testament revelation uh, that when we die, we go to be with Jesus. We go to be with God. And he has created the new earth that we'll then live in. And we'll be able to fellowship with God at a totally different level. And the Bible actually talks about this in 1 Corinthians 13. It's the love chapter. It's one that a lot of people love to read about. But it talks specifically about what I'm talking about here. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, 9, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what, what's in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put my ways of childhood behind me. For now, and this is what I want you to get. It says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So see right now, we're still in this box. And we're able to, to have fellowship with the Holy God of the universe, the one that created us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. He's, he's a deposit guaranteeing that the hope is going to come. This hope we were just talking about. This time in which I will no longer be stuck only in the box where I don't have that fellowship with God, but that I will know God fully and he will know me fully. And I will know you fully and you will know me fully. And at that time is when sin has been taken care of and we get to fellowship with God in a very amazing way.